saying it's live now. All right, show one of y'all, Sharala. All right, Brock the Yahweh. Brock the Yahushai. Brock the Yahweh. Brock the Yahushai. All right, we want to give all praise to Yahweh by Shimmy Yahushai. All right, uh, we'll say Shalom to the elect. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. All right, our Zaquanium Noah, which means our elders and apostles. All right, double honors to them that they rule well. And soon to be revealed as just the men of the Lord, you know, because, uh, they, they're in the right spirit, right vibration, and energy of Yahweh by Shemiah Shah. So as you can see from the title, it should be uh, catching hell is our profession. You know, I noticed, uh, I've been noticing uh, through the spirit, I've, I've, I'm just picking up on it. There's a, there's a whole new wave of Akim coming in, you know, that are, are learning the basics, understanding who you are, all right, and you're on fire and you have a zeal, all right? And there's one thing to remember. Catching hell is going to come with the territory, man, and there's, there's, it's going to come in many forms. So uh, let's just get straight to it. I can, you can get first that first Peter four, first Peter four and twelve. Yeah, you get this out of first Peter four and twelve, and then we're just going to go in the spirit wherever the spirit takes us, you know, because just as you the newer brothers may be newly coming to the faith a year, maybe a couple months, the shit that you're going through, we have gone through, you know, we've gone through, and we're still going through it right now. You know what I mean? All the examples of how men of the Lord caught hell, we're going through it heavy, you know, with you. You know, so, if you read that out. This is First Peter 4, verse 12. You love it. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. Right, don't be, don't get bent out of shape when stuff starts happening to you, man. Because this this is a fiery trial um, that the Most High has put us in, man. We are in a furnace. Uh, uh, of adversity, like the scripture says. What's that, Isaiah uh, 30 and 20? You can get that out real quick. Because this, this is known as a fiery trial. When fire is put to something, it's for the good of it, to purge it. You know? that That is the, the, the best cleansing agent out there. It's fire. Got that, uh, Isaiah 30? Isaiah 30 and uh, 20. It might be like That's a verse up. Yeah, come. Um, 30, it's 20. Though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet I know that teaches you the new into the honor of man. Right, read one more time, Mark. And though the Lord give he give you the bread of adversity. Right, so this is coming from Yahweh Bashmi Shah. You can't think that oh uh, the Lord doesn't know what's going on. He's the one put us in this situation. He said, though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, all right, because you have to eat it. <laughs> no matter how it comes, you have to devour it and you have to take it. He said, though he gives you the bread of adversity, and it was the water of affliction. And the water of affliction, man, it's because you're going to be submerged in this hell that we're catching. You know, the affliction comes in many forms, and it's, it's always to teach us a lesson. You know, to build, it may, whether it's to build our faith, which it always does. Show us how to be humble. You know, those are the two major major things. When you catch hell, it it humbles your ass, all right? And you have to realize that you have to keep the faith no matter what, man. Because it's, it's beautiful because even though the Lord is catch, we're catching hell, the Lord's not going to just leave us out here just catching hell and not know why. He told us why, and he even told us that we he, he put teachers and men in place to guide us, to show us why we're catching hell, you know, to break it down to us. That's why we're making this video, man, because catching hell is our profession. Right. Now, when you go into that word profession, it goes back to the word prophesy, right. you know, to say something before, and the Lord did prophesy this. Right. Uh, and also, the scripture said um, in Ezekiel that in the book was found what? Woe and lamentations. Right. So when we prophesy, you know, when we prophesy, most of the, the prophecies is about what? It's about destruction. You know, it's then towards the end that the book, you know, that the Bible prophesied, prophesied about what? Deliverance. You know, but most of the prophecies in this book is about death and destruction. How the Edomites are going to go into slavery. How the nations are going to go into slavery. How Edom Esau is going to be exterminated. Yeah. And then towards the end, that's when you get the joy, the joyous part of, uh, of the prophecy, which is the deliverance of the elect out of the nation of Israel. Right. For the most part, it's about death and destruction, catching help, right? mm -hmm. and being right. purified through uh, adversity. Uh, 
Uh, this is Job 5 and 17. It says, Behold, happy is the man whom Yahweh Hashem Yahushah corrected. Right, happy. And correction doesn't always come in a nice, gentle form. A lot of the times when we're being corrected, all right, being corrected is harsh. You know, it's harsh. The Lord's correction and his, his rebuke, all right, and his reproach is, is hard upon men, you know? It, and it comes, like I said, it comes in many forms, man. We're gonna, we're willing, we're gonna get some examples in the scriptures. Quick one. Mm -hmm. Say this is a uh, so Ecclesiasticus chapter forty-one, verse eleven. The mourning of men is about their bodies. Yeah, you might have infirmities. That's an example. You might have an infirmity or an ailment. You don't really get sick like that, and then out of nowhere, you just get sick, man. And your and your body shutting down, you know, because when you're sick, um. It's hard. It's harder to study. Yeah. It's harder to focus. Your body's messed up. You're worrying about the pain, maybe in in your chest. Maybe you got a headache or something like that. You know, but that's that's when you glory for real, for real. You know, that's when you're supposed to glory. When, when you uh when, when you're down and out like that, if you can read that again, uh, this is uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter forty one, verse eleven. It says the morning. Of men is about their bodies, but an ill name of sinners shall be blood, blotted out. The main point is the mourning of men is about their body. Like right. the brother said, it's, um, it's not only like physical ailments, but also remember when you going through, you know, when, especially when you catch a hell, a lot of times it's because your flesh is battling with your spirit. You know, so you your flesh is really crying because you're not feeding your flesh. You have to understand when you're not, your flesh is not being fed, then it's gonna what? It's gonna attack your spirit, and you're gonna feel all fucked up. Which also, that's also a part of what trials and tribulations. You know, and, but you have to overcome that, just like how Shah was able to overcome it. All right. This is Proverbs chapter nineteen, verse eighteen. It says, uh, "Trust in thy son, while there is hope. Uh, let not thy soul spare." Time Proverbs, down, 11, Proverbs 19, verse 18. Chasten thy son while there is hope. Uh, let not thy soul spare for his crime. So, you know, the elect went through all kind of hell, you know, catching hell from the Edomites, you know, the Eden, and two thirds. You know, especially, you know, when we're doing this work, you know, it's a bitter experience. You know, we're going to cry, we're going to have all kind of headaches, you know, girls going through all kind of situations. Well, you know, the most is not going to let that tell, you know, cool down until we've gone through the whole process. You know, we got to go through the fire. You know, we got gold, we got silver. You know, so we got to go through uh, that situation. You know, scripture talks about, you know, uh, silver being purified seven times. You know, so we got to complete the, we got to complete the process. Uh, this is Job, chapter 5. Verse 6, it says, Although affliction cometh not forth of the dust, neither doth trouble spring out of the ground, yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upwards. All right, so we were born into this, man, you know? If, you were, if the Lord has you predestinated to be a man of the Lord, you are going to catch hell, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to catch hell. Look, look at Jeremiah, look at Job. Isaiah, all the prophets, they were all in captivity. You know, they were all in captivity. Right, like this brother just said, it's for our learning. You know, if you're going through something, no matter what it is, you need, you got to make it your business, all right, to filter it through the scriptures, to find out where did my forefathers, where did this happen to them? So I can relate to it. Because we always say, you got to make this thing personal, man. You got to make this thing super personal to where... It gets you upset, man, where two-thirds gets you upset because you understand what a two-third is. The heathens, they make you upset because you understand what a heathen is. You know, upset to a certain point, you know, because it's a, it's called righteous anger. But at the same time, well, we'll go back to Peter's now, bro. Huh. Because you can't think of a strange thing. If you think it's a strange thing, that's where your faith is start to dwindle, you know. You know it's of Yahweh Bashmi Shai, that's what boosts your faith because you know he's in control of it all at the end of the day. Go ahead up. First Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, 
think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which right is, in some in trials, if you know anything about courts? Trials don't always just start and end on the same day. Sometimes trials go for weeks, for months, you know. So we're in our we're in our trial period right now to see if we can be found worthy to receive salvation. You know, go ahead, Ark. Huh. It says, "Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you." Right, as though some strange thing has happened unto you. All right, like I said, all the men of the Lord have gone through it. All right, and us, us too, for the for the tenure that we've been in this truth, we know brothers that are are just newly coming into the faith, proselytes. When you look that up, novices, the newbies, there's going to be things that happen to you that you have no idea why it's happening to you yet. But we're here to tell you this, man. All right, catching hell is part of your profession. If you deem yourself and you're trying to fall in the steps. Of Yahweh Shai, all right, of a real Christian, all right, that's what a real Christian is, who follows Yahweh Shai, right. all right, who right. follows Yahweh Shai, you're going to catch hell, all right, and it's going to be completely uncomfortable. The curse says, no matter where we set the sole of our foot, we shall have no ease. Off that alone, man, you should know. Let's get on that, Peter. You had a precept? Huh. Huh. Uh, let this brother bring up. This is uh, Revelation uh, 3, verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. It says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Remember, uh, the, in the scriptures in the wisdom of Solomon, it says, the Lord loveth none, except them with wisdom. So if he gave you this wisdom and his knowledge and understanding, that means he loves you. Because there's people out there that he didn't give it to. Those are the ones that are going to be set for destruction. We're talking about those of the uh, the two thirds, man. The rest of uh, uh you know, of, of that ilk, man. And since the Lord gave it to you, guess what? He's going to chastise you, man. He's going to uh, because guess what? It's going to come a time when uh, all hell's going to break loose. Like the brother said, a trial period doesn't mean one day. It, and uh, matter of fact, Revelation two and ten, it says uh. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil was a suffering is part of chastisement, because really all this is coming from the Lord. Even whatever Esau does to, the, to, does to us is coming from the Lord. Right. It says, uh, uh, Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. And not ten days is a... Uh, a perfect amount of days that the Lord is going to have you going through a trial period, man. Was that during those times is going to be a chastisement, man? So we're trying to we're, we're going to get chastised now for those times to come, because those times to come is going to be a part of Daniel's twelve and one, a time like never before seen. So of course you want to get refined and hardened up now for those times to come. Yeah. All right. That season. That's the real season of the fire kicking up is coming soon, man. We're coming into that season. See everything that's going on, all the tension, the spirit mm -hmm. is getting heightened every day in this place, man. Mm -hmm. You got to be extra circumspect. Right. I mean, they can run up in your crib for no damn reason and arrest you now. You know, I mean, the NDAA was already on the books, but now they got this thing where they can actually run up in your crib, man. Just picture that. Hold you for what? For eight hours? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no due, pro due process out the window. Right. Me. Okay. It says, "Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life." You gotta be faithful. You gotta be believing in Yahweh Shemuel Shai His word unto death. He give you a crown of life. Okay. It's leading, uh, basically, what the brothers is talking about. So uh, we gotta catch hell now, man. Even before those times to come, man. Be faithful unto uh, whatever we're going through. Okay. Right? Yeah, precept five. Uh, uh, right. Uh, just you know, etymology. I was just looking, you know, looking up um, the word uh, suffer. Uh, it was suffer, sufferance, and suffering. Uh, the first one, the Elmo line, suffer. It says allowed to occur or continue. But the one that I wanted, it says to be made to undergo, endure, be subjected to pain, death, 
punishment. Word, to be subject to pain. When you come into this truth, that's all it is, man. A, a, a lot of the times, all right, we're going to lose, according to this world anyways. In the, in the spiritual sense, when it comes to the truth, we always win, man, because we got the 100% truth. But when it comes to uh, uh, maneuvering through society and stuff mm -hmm. and dealing with this world, we lose majority of the time, man. We hardly win. That's being subject to pain because it doesn't have to be physical pain. Well, yet, anyways, you know, that's coming down the pike. The brother just read it. But now it's pain of the mind and of the spirit, man. Romans speaks about how certain things happen to us and we can't formulate it into words so that our spirit groans. Yahweh by Shemar Shai hears our groans. That's being subject to pain. That's a good definition. You had a precept? Yeah, because uh, it, it was, uh, it says, subjected to pain, death, punishment, judgment, grief. It says, uh, Anglo French, Sufri, Old That's French, Soul Fred. Yeah. And it says, to bear. It. it says, to bear, endure, resist. Now it says, to bear, right? Uh, this is uh, Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 1, verse 23. It says, a patient man will bear for a time. That's right. And afterward, joy shall spring up unto him. That's right. So when you That's look right. up the word suffer, in the etymology, one of the words that show up is to bear. And when you go to the scripture, again, Sirach 1 and 23, it says, A patient man will bear for a time, and afterward joy shall spring up unto him. You know, because right now, man, we if you were to if you were to look at the type of season that we are, we in in dead winter. And 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 you were looking for that spring. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you know that we're in winter? You know, the reason why I use winners because what? You look at Israel, we don't like the winner. Right. When the winner is around, Israel is not having a good time. That's mm -hmm. why even in the scriptures of the Lord said, pray that your flight be not in the door of the winner. Mm -hmm. So to us, this season in America, it's, it's been a winner. But we waited for what? For that season. That we, we wait, what season are we waiting for? Spring. Mm -hmm. With spring, that's your house shot. Your house shot yeah. is spring. Life. Because spring comes life. You know, light. Life, so that's what we looking. That's what, that's what we looking forward to. But we understand right now we got to be patient and bear for a time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Say, uh, pain is weakness to your blood. Right. So you know, when you first mm -hmm. walking out, you sweat and you're like, I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, you start getting all kind of nah. you know, you So it's part of uh, you know, our profession. Those are some of the best workouts too. And you're just throwing different stuff at your body. You may you may have a, a set workout that you do during the week, but then one day you just do a whole bunch of different stuff to see how your body will react to it, man. That's how it is with this truth. You know? You just, it's a it's a crazy workout, you know? It's just all types of rep crazy reps, enormous amount of weight. Uh just working out every single part of the body. Hey, we're all one body of your house shot. We can only get stronger from here, you know. Spirit, contradictory. Right. You know, right. It says, you know, this second Ezra chapter 14, 14, it says, uh, Let go from ye mental toys, and cast away the burdens of man, and put off now the weak nature. You know, so that's just a simple, you know, it's the mental precepts, but that's to the basics, you know, we can do it at that stage. You know, there's, there are levels to that and there are this truth. So if brothers could, you know, get past the first hurdle, the next hurdle, mm -hmm. that's in the fine, you know, it's a perfection of the faith. Growth. Right. You know, the, the old saying, uh, no pain, no gain. Mm -hmm. No pain, no gain. Like, yeah, my little brother had it in mind because, uh, you know, it's a good analogy. Man, because the the right. workout thing is a good analogy because, listen, there's a reason why when you go outside, not everybody is cut up. You know, not everybody is in great shape. How do you buy it's cut up? How do you buy it got muscles bulging? Because it takes pain. It takes yeah. you have to have a, a, a level of um, what's the, what's the word they always use when you able to uh, uh, when you able to deal with pain? You know, a level of uh, uh, toughness or uh, tolerance. Tolerance, tolerance, pain tolerance, tolerance. tolerance, right? So you got to have a level of pain tolerance. Mm -hmm. But anybody that goes into the gym and works out, the one thing they will tell you is that I love it. I love it. You know, right. that's when you always see right. everybody that works out would tell right. you that they in pain and lifting was, yo, I love it. You know, you know, and you pulling up, you know, you pulling up and you're like, woo, woo. Now he's excited, 
but it's a lot of pain. But the key is you gotta love what you're doing. If you don't love the whole Bashman shot, if you don't love this truth, the pain is gonna overwhelm you. Yeah, you're gonna fall out, man. You know? That's that's what happens. Uh who is the parable of the sword? That uh, one of the seeds, the cares of the world, oh, man, choked him. choked him. The scriptures talk about not being entangled with this world because this world is enmity with them. Um, now, let's get that example, bro, because like I said, for the, the brothers uh, who are just coming in, this, uh, through the spirit, there's a wave of Akram coming in, man. Right. Not just here in the States, all over. Yep. You know, this past six months, this uh, past year, yep. who knows, maybe even this yeah. week. They be coming across this video. You need to know the examples of what's gonna happen to you, man. Now that you know who you are, and you believe on Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah. You know you are going to catch hell from here on out. It's gonna get worse and worse and worse. You're gonna have some lighter days, lighter days, but you're still gonna catch hell. And if I can say this, I, I mean, remember Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah is closing the doors and the mark. The way the Heavenly Father performed doing. Um, our elders and apostles seasons when they was coming up is different than the way he's operating with our season. You know, the, so the elders and apostles, they've had 30 years. So they've been given enough time to go through trials and tribulation, meaning the trials and tribulation was stretched out. For us, it was also stretched out, but we had to get a lot of these trials and tribulation and quick. quick, quicker because we had less time. Right. And we had to get on that level at a faster rate. And these beast brothers that are coming up, they gotta get on this level on an even faster rate. Cause we were catching, so, we yeah. still catching hell, you know. Yeah. It just started, it just, it was happening fast. Yeah. And now what we're seeing is that the yeah. Akim that are coming to the faith right now, they're learning quicker, yeah, a lot quicker, and, and they coming get to up quicker. They get thrown a lot more trials and tribulations. Right, that's why this is needed. You know, this this is imperative, man. You have to know, <laughs> you have to know that you cannot think that it's a strange thing happened to you. First Peter mm -hmm. four and twelve. Mm -hmm. Think it not strange. Now, can you get that example lot? Matthew ten. This is now look. This is what Yahweh told us. Uh, for the ten and thirty-five. Ten and thirty-five. And in verse thirty-six too. Uh, so he says, uh, "For I am come to set a man at variance against his father." Right. The Lord said, "He's coming, all right, to set a man at variance against his against his father." So the Lord is not going to come to your front door. Knock on your door and just start causing disruption. No, it's talking about his spirit. His word is going to set you at variance. Variance means, uh, can we look up that word variance? Let's look up the word variance. Because it said the Lord is going to come set a man uh, at variance, you know, against his father. Now, a lot of you Akim out there, you might have a good relationship with your father. And you're teetering on whether uh, maybe I should tell him or maybe I shouldn't. That also comes with, you got to learn discernment, discretion. You know, some things don't need to be said to certain family members. Also real. I don't care how, how much you love them. Because I've, I've, had, I've gone through that, man. You find out the truth. A week or two later, you're all sitting at the kitchen table arguing with each other. Go, getting no damn where. If I say this, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All of us, all of us had to go through. That's, that's. Yeah. That's level one of coming into this truth. Right? Yeah. There's levels in this truth, of course. The level one is your your so-called family members in the flesh. That's the level one. Those are the, the first spirits, the first demonic spirits that get sent. You know what I'm saying? The first principalities that get sent by who? By really ultimately by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Those those spirits will fall into what? Your mother, your father? You know, the ones that, are, like I said, family members in the flesh. Good. That's that first level. You got to pass that, that stage. If you don't, then you won't even, you know, hit the ground, man. You got that word variance out? Huh? Uh, uh, this is uh, Edelman Online. Uh, variance, it says, late 14th century. It says, fact of undergoing change. From old French variance. Change, alteration, doubt, hesitation. Directly from the Latin... Variantia from, from stem of variance to change. It says, see, where it says, meaning state of disagreement. Right, a state of disagreement. You suppose, usually you're, you're always in agreement with your, uh, 
your household members, you know, you always agree on certain things that you want to eat, certain things that you want to go do, certain things that you believe, certain customs that you keep. You know, so the Lord said that he's coming to set you at variance against the against your father. I'll keep going in that precept part. That's why it's important to look up words, man. That's another thing that it's been instilled in us here at Great Millstone on down, man. We're going to look words up. We may have an idea of what it means, but we need to know where it came from, you know. And that's that was beautiful. Go ahead up. And the daughter against her mother. Right, and the daughter, a da the daughter against her mother, so you very few Akwathim out there too. Hey, this nobody's omit, man. You t don't be going telling uh, uh, your mother or your father or your brother, your sister, especially, I'm saying, especially if you know that they heavy, super heavy into the church. You know, they're not too much conscious about nothing. You got to use discernment, man. Because, uh, uh, let's also get, uh, cast out your pros before swan. Was that the seventh chapter? Go ahead, I also want to say this, uh, for, you know, for the, uh, the few uh, sisters out there, the few aqua, I think, you know, not only remember when Yahweh Shah, when, you know, when Yahweh Shah said that he's come to set a man at variance against his father, you know, fat disagreement within the families, a lot of times you could disagree without even having uh, a conversation about it. Mm -hmm. Meaning, a lot of times you see the sisters will look at their families in a way the family operates and be like, I can't be a part of that no more. So she would find herself just doing her own thing. You know, let's say she's a single woman, you know. Because most of the, mo I mean, to be real, most of the wife which are be part of the elect, most of them are single. You know, they probably got a, a job, you know, to sustain themselves. Because, you know, the society helps the woman anyways. But they find themselves attracting from their family members, from their cousins, they they they, they are whore, you know, their whore cousins and whore mm -hmm. aunties, uh -huh. you know, with them whore mothers. So they're, they're pulling themselves from that. So a lot of times it doesn't necessarily have to come to blows of arguments. You they, you just find yourself attracting yourself and then be like, yo, I can't, I can't deal with them no more. Right. And that's being at variance as well. Just make sure, okay. That's right. Um, this is uh, Psalms 27 and 10. It says, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. There's a reason why the Akim are going into uh, the first stage is dealing with your uh, people, man. Yeah. What's the, what's the scripture? A man's enemy is the, those of his own household. A man's foes yeah. are those of his own household. Foes is the enemy. Yeah, yeah, if I can say something, the reason why we're going on the household so hard is because when we first came into the faith, we were up under our parents. That's right. Like, That's completely up under our parents. Yeah. Brothers were just turning 21, 22. Some brothers were still teenagers. You know what I'm saying? Now brothers are almost pushing 30, our 30, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So that household thing, that's there's heavy demons there, man, you know? Yeah. Latin tribes, hey brothers, man, y'all need to stop, man. I know you're more family oriented and everything, but your family is really uh, holding you back as well, man. Yeah, they got spirits. You know, you, uh, cause Latin tribes are very, out of all the tribes, I mean, especially in America, yeah. They're definitely the tribes that seems like they're not undergoing the curses like we are. Yeah. And so I was, but, uh, when I say we, I'm talking about the Southern Kingdom, the Southern Kingdom. as far as family, because mm -hmm. you're more family oriented, mm -hmm. but you're under the curses too because you're an Israelite. That's right. And your family in those days, if you're not strong minded and truth, they're going to get you killed, man. That's right. You're, you're, to, to Mama, and, uh, to the Padre, yeah. and all that, Primos. Yeah. They're gonna, they're gonna you love them so much. They're gonna get you killed because they're gonna say, "Come to Jesus Christos." Yeah. You should be coming to Yahweh Shai. Yeah, and, and and you know if you're coming in the house, and you know how Ephraim is, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, uh, the Northern Kingdom, they got a house full of idols. Where? I mean, after a while, no man in the Lord, no man in the Lord in his right mind dealing with the spirit of Yahweh yeah. Shai Yahweh Shai will stay in a house full of idols, right? mm -hmm. especially not at that at that stage. Mm -hmm. You know, and especially at that stage. You know, the, the older you are, you can you can be around this stuff, but but not commit to it. You know, because you know you're more seasoned right. in this. Right. So this stuff could be around you. And you could just laugh at them. But when you come into the truth, you still you 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 know you're novice. So being around that will you know will fuck your mind up. And what's gonna happen is that 
you won't be able to stop yourself from what? From arguing and disagreeing with your parents and say, y'all gotta get these fucking idols out of the house. Bro. Right, because they're gonna they're gonna ask you questions. I'm gonna bring out these two precepts a lot. Your your family members and your close people that you know, they're gonna see that your spirit has changed. Right. They're gonna wanna know what's going on. You know, and you have to do your best to use discretion. You can read that Matthews. Yes. Uh, Matthew seven. Verse uh, 6. Because discretion will preserve you, man. That's what the scriptures say. Discretion will preserve thee. You know? Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Right. This is holy and these are our pearls. The mm -hmm. swine and the dogs is everybody outside this truth. If this if it's not the Akim, Yahweh Alright? The fuck them, man. If it don't have to do with salvation, I don't. I'm not talking to you. What are we gonna talk about? You know, we're gonna talk about idol stuff. Okay, that's cool. If they try to ask you any spiritual stuff, you know, and you discern that they really ain't gonna get it, you know, don't cast nothing before them. Try to change the subject, man. Ask them how. Talk about the football season or some shit, you know, or basketball or or work or anything, you know, because I'm telling you, it's gonna save you a lot. From catching a lot of hell. You're going to catch hell. It's going to save you from catching a lot more hell. You know, just speaking from experience. Um, I got a couple precepts here. This is a Sirach 32 and 7. It says, speak young man if there be need of thee. There's not always a need to speak. You know, that that even goes for us now. Sometimes we, we see... Uh, what we think may be opportune times to speak, maybe drop the knowledge on Jake, but it's really not needed. Right. So it says, and yet scarcely, scarcely means not, uh, uh, not, a, not a lot left, you know, almost nothing. It says, and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. Cause some people might try to press on you, like, yeah. that's when you really got to think, like, damn, should I, uh, should I really break it down to yeah. him? Or, yeah. or you might even be already be talking about it, talking about something. And then you be thinking about going deeper, and they ask me a question like, nah, I shouldn't really drop this much on them right now because it might be too much. Yeah. And if you give it to them, then read the next verse in Matthew. Right. Uh, Mr. Lockyer, it says, uh, ask, and if you want me to finish the rest of six or? Yeah, yeah, six. Uh, uh, Neither cast ye your pearl before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rent them. Right, that's why. Because sometimes if, you, if, if they press upon you too much, you start going deep on things, they're going to take that and try to use it as a reproach. You may teach Jake the name, and then Jake just tarnishes the name. You know, you teach Jake a certain breakdown, then they take it and they become a fucking heretic and shit, man. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And Yahweh by Shemal Shah is not pleased with that. Right. Now, this is another precept. This is Sirach uh, 33 and 29. It says, Be not excessive toward any." And without discretion, do nothing. Let me read that again. Be not excessive toward any, and without discretion, do nothing. Meaning, discretion needs to be involved in everything. Yo, even when I'm getting my food at the grocery stores, I'm being, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm up to the point where I'm discreet in all things, man, because we in the times where shit is popping, you know? Stuff is going on right now, bro, as we speak. We have to be circumspect, man. Super circumspect. We were just watching a video. The cop said, uh, you're not black. We yeah. only kill black people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This, we're at a time where Edomites are telling other Edomites, look, you're good. We're after these niggas. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. Yeah, hey, it is a beautiful <laughs> thing. <laughs> it looks like the movie. But niggas ain't a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. He no said prophecy. Yeah, yeah, prophecy is a beautiful thing. Yeah, the niggas ain't a beautiful thing. That's another thing, man. Uh, like Killing brothers. black people. So. Yeah, come. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah, the alleged. I just say. Yeah. Right. That, that's another thing, you know. With, uh, part of the curses is uh, Jake getting fucked with, with the cops. That's a part of the curses, man. Devil go about seeking whom he may devour. Hey, part of that is uh, you Jake's out there getting pulled over by the cops for no reason. Black Lives Matter. Hey, man, y'all, you, you don't have to always uh, argue with the cops, man. 
This is my right. Why'd you pull me over? Yo, yo, if you and a man of the Lord and stuff in this truth, y'all got to stop that, man. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, don't be excessive, man. We are not kings yet. Yeah. We are not in a position to rule and exert authority like these police. Yeah, use your wisdom, man. Use wisdom. Like the brother said, uh, discretion. Use wisdom, man. You think the devil, you know, play the devil. You use the mind that the Lord gave you because we're... Brother said we're not kings yet, but we're supposed to act like it in your, in your mindset, man. That's why the scripture said, therefore, put on as in as uh, as in the day. We're supposed to put it on like like we are, man. We're above these people. So use wisdom, man. All right? They pull you over. You disagree with them. And have them be about their way, man. Play them, man. Uh -huh. So you can be on about your way. Sure. You know? Yeah, because you got to remember, in all in all, we have a job to do. That's right. You can't let nothing jeopardize That's your right. job. That's right. Back to the family thing. If you back in Matthew's Zoc, real quick, the family thing, if you if you're too excessive towards your family members, we're talking for your brothers who might be up under the household still, and you you're not uh, 18 maybe, you don't have enough to move out or whatever. If you bring out this truth to your family, they might try to keep you at the crib, man. They might kick you out of the crib. They might do something to where you can't make it out on Saturdays or whatever day that I can go out. Yeah. You can't let anything jeopardize the priority, man, uh, of your profession. I remember in the camp, oh, well, not in the camp, but out on the highways, you know, one of the brothers in the camp, his younger brother. Remember the situation with oh, his yeah, younger yeah, brother? Yep. We had a brother where, uh, you know, the brother's in the camp, but his younger brother, you know, he you know, he listens, he comes out on the highways and the edges and listens, he got a garment and everything, but, I mean... There was a time where his family was phys physically stopping him from coming coming to the camp. You know what I'm saying? That, that older brother that's in the world would literally stay by the door and put his foot by the door and say, you're not forcibly, going. Yeah. Forcibly said, you're not leaving the house, man. Mm -hmm. You know, just sitting, man. Yeah. Hey, well, you know what? If, you, if you're younger, you know, because the elect, like we like to say, for the men, women, and children selected to make it out of here, the younger men. If you're, if, you're, if you're a younger man, you know, you know the whole 18 and under thing, you're still under your parents and the rules of this nature, but you still believe in Yahweh Shemel Shai. If that stuff happens to you, just continue to pray to the Lord. Right. Those are uh, the, the situation that the brothers have talked to. I personally talked with uh, uh, the, the one brother uh, about something, and he was like, hey, what should I do? You know, what would this, what would that? And we talked about the whole prayer aspect, and lo and behold, now the brother's out listening, man. Regardless, man, of what, what their parents is, is doing, man. And now the Lord worked us, now he's out there. So, you know, it's, if you are a younger man, you're still under the, the rules and engagements of your, your parents. You, hey, pray to the Yahweh Shem Shai, because the Lord can still deliver you, man. You know, use your wisdom, use, use discretion, you know, and the Lord will deliver you, man. You know? uh, this is Psalms chapter 31, verse 7. It says, I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul in adversities. And that's the thing. I mean, the Heavenly Father, just like it says in uh, Hebrews 12, the Heavenly Father, for the Heavenly Father to know you, it has to be through what? Adversities, man. The Heavenly Father is not because the Lord knows what's going on. The, the, the Lord knows that Jake is privy to say nice things, to say whatever they got to say when everything is nice. The Lord wants to see how you react yeah. when everything is not nice. Yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? The apocrypha says, if thou wouldst get a friend, thou should just try him first. That's right. Absolutely. If we're, we're supposed to be friends of the Most High, so he's right. trying Listen, us. Listen to Solomon in the 7th chapter. It says, uh, this Holy Spirit entering into holy souls and making them friends of the Most High. Uh, uh, so if we're going to be friends of your whole body, you know, and the Lord has to. The Lord has to trust us. The Scripture said, "Wisdom has has to trust that soul before she enters into you." Man. Uh, she has to see. She has to see that you're not gonna what? That you're not just gonna toss her to the side and go after another woman, a strange woman. Uh -huh. So wisdom all over what trials over you know weeks, weeks, months, and years of trials and tribulation. Wisdom will slowly but surely enter into your house, which is where's your house? Your house is your mind, your heart, law. So it's a process that can only growth, spiritual growth can only be attained through trials and tribulation and adversity. There's no way around that. Real quick, I want to read this precept. This is Sirach 6, verse uh, 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. 
Right. Prove him first. Put the fire to it. That's what the Lord's doing. Are not we friends of, of Yahweh Shah? We're not the disciples friends of Yahweh Shah? You know, the men of the Lord, friends of the disciples, mm -hmm. therefore they were friends of Yahweh Shah. Mm -hmm. Man, we're in them times, man. We're in them times right now. We are trying to be friends of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah because you, what's the opposite of a friend? It's the enemy. So that them that uh, be my enemies, uh, bring them hither and, and slay them, them before, before me. me. Yeah, yeah, we don't want that to happen to us. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be we don't want to be brought in front of Yahweh Shad and get slain, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We want to be with Yahweh Shad and we want to be the ones who out, be out there and do a slain, man. Right. But for that, we, we need to do something. We need our flesh need to be slain. You know, and, and a lot of times the trials of tribulation really is just your flesh. Let me read this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, one and one. No, 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 that was it. Uh, some more just to finish it, it says, and be not hasty to credit him right be mm -hmm. not hasty to credit him yeah, yeah. the lord is not you know how about shimon shah that's why the growth happens in increments mm -hmm. you know that's why the lord would you know start with our elders and apostles with millstone gave him what you know 30 years and for us and the elders under them 15 20 25 years mm -hmm. us you know going up in 10 years and the brothers behind us it takes time man. Yeah, another thing i can uh, listen in, uh don't be so quick to just uh, uh, think that somebody got it and then they're, they're rocking with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Somebody in the world, they may ask you questions. They kick them precepts. Look, man, we in the times where well, we're thinking about this too all the time. If you're not in the camp, man, you're a potential agent. Yeah, yeah. You know Big what time. I mean? Everybody's a fucking a potential agent right now, man. Well, brother, really, everybody is an agent. One way, another, one way or another, who you working for? Mm -hmm. See. Who are you working for? We working for Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. We are agents of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Because uh. remember, everything comes in two. There's always a mm -hmm. flip side to yep, it. Yep. So ultimately, all of us are working for somebody. Duality. You just got to work. You just got to find out who's working for who. Uh. You know? That's how you got to try them. You got to try them. You can't just accept nobody <laughs> into the fold like that, man. Right. That's why the scriptures refer to as men crept in unawares. Right. right. Hey, we, it, we, hey, we've caught hell because of that. And this yeah, can't yeah, personally. Yeah. I mean, you can see who's lasting. Absolutely. I mean, it's countless, right. countless guys, man. I mean, we don't have two hands to hold all the people. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know that's what right. I'm saying? That's right. Um, yeah, come on, go ahead, dog. This is Psalms 31 and 7. It says, I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. Thou has known my soul in adversities. Adversi adversities, plural. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. And, and has not shut me up in the in the hand of the enemy. Thou has, and when it says the enemy, it's not only talking about physical enemy, but also principality. Mm -hmm. These spiritual demons. Right. You know, the more you go into the, you come into this truth, on the, on, the, on the lower level, when you first come into this truth, the first enemies is usually not is not the spiritual demons just yet because you don't you're not spiritual enough to to, to understand that, the dynamic to understand yeah, the dynamic dynamic between the, you know the angel or the most high is telling you something or it's Satan speaking to me you're not on that level yet you're on you're still on the carnal level so Satan is coming at you and what on a carnal level very very hard yeah. so he's coming through your parents. You know, he's coming through where you were taught. You were taught in this society that your mother and your father, your mama, is everything, right? Yeah. You know, you believe your mama is everything. She always has the final world, right. has the Jake, final word. Jake swears up and down. And Family, down. blood. Oh, blood is thicker than water. Mm -hmm. Satan has heard niggas, you know, is, is spakes and, and, and wetbacks, so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Satan knows that there's that talk in the midst of Israel. Right? Blood is thicker than water. So, so Satan is going gonna, is gonna to come through that blood. But Yahweh Bashim al Shah is teaching you that the true family is a spiritual family. Mm -hmm. And once you understand that, then you're not going to fall when Satan is coming after you through what? Blood. Hey, fuck peer pressure, man. That's right. I'm just going to say it straight, man. Fuck peer pressure, man. That's what it boils down to. Yeah, peer pressure is going to get you killed, man. I want to be, like, uh, be like everybody else. I want to be cool. I want them to accept me. I don't want to be different. Or I want to find a common meeting. You know, in, the, in between so I can be cool with them. And, and nah, fuck that, man. Yeah. That shit will get you killed, man. Yeah. You know? You can't have one foot in the world and then think you're going to get one foot in the chariot. Mm -hmm. It don't work like that, man. Right. You 
know, or you, you, you think you're going to have one foot in the world and, and one foot in the camp. You know, we've had guys like that, man. Mm -hmm. They disappeared or got locked up. Yeah. Right. These niggas got locked up and then nowhere to be found again. Or they just bugged out of their, their mind all the way. You know? Uh, you got something not, you're not sure? We're back in Matthews and Bakr Shah. Right, so this Matthew chapter 10, verse 35. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. 36. And the man's foes. Yeah, son. you might have some Akim out there who were actually in that situation. You got a wife, you know, and, and the wife, she, uh, she might not necessarily believe all the way, or maybe she believes a little bit, or maybe uh, you're a woman, you got a husband, he may not believe all the way, may believe a little bit. And your in-laws know what's going on. It's like, man, why you marry this person? You know, why you get with this person? You need to leave them. You need to divorce them. You know, or you need to conv you need to convince your man to stop going out on Saturdays and stop listening to them videos that you listen to. You need to start coming over here for Sunday dinners and you know what I'm saying? That's the type you know the type of scenarios Jake be, man. Jake be trying to make you feel guilty on some wicked shit, man. Like the peer pressure. You can't let that shit get to you, man. Peer pressure gonna get you killed, you gotta, man. You gotta be prepared to let them uh, to let them go yeah. or to let them die, man. Or do you wanna die over a Sunday dinner? Or do you wanna die over some ice cream in the park on a Saturday? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. These are the things that pull Jake out the truth. Yeah. Now the divorce thing that you said or, or why'd you do that or whatever, uh, you know, you got Jake out there, well, I don't wanna lose my woman, or I don't wanna lose this. Like I said, you gotta be ready to let him go. Let them die, because if you can't pass that test and not let them go, then when the time comes when it says, "Are you willing to take the chip?" Yeah. Or, or your family will die. You gotta let them die, man. Okay, we, you know. This is Luke fourteen and twenty six. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children. Yo, I was I, I used to bring this out to my uh, to my family members when they would ask me what I'm into and. You know, they were asking, you know, you need to show more love, and I will bring this out, bro. We have battles with our so so called family members mm -hmm. to this day. But you know, yeah, it comes to this day. But when you read that, it's not. And I I had this conversation too when I was bringing it out. It's not like I brought it out saying, "Oh, I, I hate you, I hate you." You know, it was look, I hate your ways. That's right. That's right. What you're doing is not right. That's right. It's detestable. It's abominable. I can't stand this shit. You can read that from the top again. Uh, this is Luke 14 and 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children. Right. If any man come to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh If any man come to Yahweh Shai, takes on what he took on. All right. That's mm -hmm. what they're saying. If you if you take putting on the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh this is what comes next. Says, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also. Bro, that's everybody. <laughs> that's everybody. That's right. That's everybody you know. Including yourself. That's your entire family. Doesn't the scripture says that like two of a family? That's right. We can look that up in Walker Shaw. One of the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah one yeah, of the yeah. city. Because that's everybody. Bro, that list. Brother, sister, uncle, aunt, basically. You know, because when it goes into brother, sister, that goes into your kinfolk, too. It's not just talking about your actual brother, your right. actual sister from your same father and mother. It's talking about your cousins. That's right. It's talking about your nephews, your nieces. You know, you may have an old Jake out there. It's talking about your grandbabies. You may have an old Jake coming to the truth. Got sons. 40 years old, 50 year olds, grandbabies in their 20s, in their 20s having grandkids, great grandkids. Look, you got to drop all that. You cannot be a disciple of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai and have have those things in front of you. Yahweh Shai has to be the only thing in front of you. Everything else is on the back burner because guess what? All those people that he's naming that you have to hate, they're not going to make it on a chariot with you. You are getting on a chariot by yourself, man. That's right. Why is that? The apostles told us that. Look, the apostles cannot save us. 
as much as they know, as much as they have taught us, they cannot deliver us out of this condition. Yeah, Believe me, they would have done it already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They would have done it. A little bit further, they can't even deliver themselves. Right. Because the deliverance comes from who? From Yahweh Shah. That's right. So even the apostles and, and the elders and the apostles, they, they also have to wait for salvation. You right. know what I'm saying? So like that's what the scripture said. You gotta work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. And 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 uh Ezra's, I think it's our second Ezra, where he said with the uh, the path being so thin and being that, that dangerous path. It's a dangerous path. You only one to, could go by there. Only one could go by. Because on one side is water and the other one is fire, man. It's a hell, man. Walking a tightrope is not easy. You walk on a path and you see a deep water on one side and fire raging on the other. How you going to act? You know, how you going to act? You got to be, you got to be on, yeah, you on, walking on eggshells. You got to be circumspect. Yeah, you are praying the whole time that you don't fall on either side, That's right. bro. That's right. You know, Jake don't know how to swim. Yeah. <laughs> you know what right. I'm saying? Right. And Jake don't like the heat when it's right. too hot. Right. You know? So, and that's hell, man. You know, adversity on either side all the time. Every day, day in and day out. Look, when you wake up in the morning, I know brothers had this, I, this thought. When you open your eyes, you're like, shit. We in this shit again? Yeah. Yeah. Just waking up is hell, bro. First of all, we don't wake, none of us wake up naturally. We all have a specific time we gotta be at work. Mm -hmm. This is bullshit, man. Set up alarms. But guess what? We take we take it cheerfully though. Right. You know, I'm driving to work. I'm cursing the hell out of <laughs> cursing the hell out of this place, man. Right. Yeah, that's the balance. The Lord ain't just gonna put us in a situation and not tell us why. Right. I mean, you can't ask for a better deal. That's a dope promise. That's a that's a beautiful uh was uh bar baraya, uh yeah baraya, which means a uh, uh, covenant or a promise or agreement. It's beautiful. Ya pa baraya, the beautiful covenant or beautiful agreement. The why do you how about shmi al shah for that man? Precepts. Uh, uh, this is um uh, uh, second Ezra uh, chapter Matthew thirteen. 13. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 13, verse 23. It says, He that shall endure the peril in that time has kept himself. They that be fallen into danger are such as have works and faith towards the Almighty. That's a lot. There's a lot in that precept, bro. If you can read that again. Um, this is 2nd Ezra 13 and 23. It says, He that shall endure the peril in that time has kept himself. Yeah, yeah, endure, which is your call, or Yahweh call in the Hebrew, man. It says that he that basically sustains himself through that has kept himself. You know, the scriptures speak about examining yourself, whether you be in the faith of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You, we've made it to this point, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You brothers that are coming in now, you're coming up real quick. You got to keep yourself, man, to be found worthy. Go ahead, Art. God, it says, He that shall endure the peril in that time has kept himself. They that be fallen into danger are such as have works and faith towards the Almighty. Yeah. And that danger is talking about that, that path. Mm -hmm. that, that path where on one side, because the thing about this path is that as you're working in the tightrope, you do get. Notice, you know, he, he, you know, you, you do get burned a little bit on the side. That's the thing about the path. It's not that you're working on the path and, and you're just working through the path clean. Right. No. By the time you, you come to the end of that path, you're going to have bumps and bruises. You're going to have waters, you know, water. Your, your feet going to be wet on one side. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that you drown. That's why this, the, uh, the elder brother, uh, Malcolm, uh, in Chicago, Shalom Wamps and brother in Chicago, Shalom, 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 Shalom. he always opens up his videos with a phrase where he says, uh, you know, it says Shalom to all the, the elect, and he says, and to the men who are risking their lives and putting their lives in jeopardy for yeah. Yahweh by Shema yeah. Shah. Hey, that's a real ass statement, man. That's right. When you think about the magnitude of the work that we're doing and who we are, you know what I mean? As far as Israelites and our position in this thing, it's dangerous, bro. It's not, a, it's not even nothing to be played with. You know? You think about it back in ancient times, there was no 911. You just got jumped. You, whatever happened, happened out there. 
nothing's new under the sun, man. It's gonna happen again. And you Akim that uh that come out to the camps to watch, you are risking your lives. You are in jeopardy. You Akim who are watching this feed, who haven't gone out yet or came out yet, your life is in jeopardy. Right. You don't think Esau, Esau knows what's going on. I he knows he about this feed. Hey, this thing was supposed to, uh, he was supposed to get the show up about an hour or so yeah. ago, yeah. and Satan was yeah. fucking with it. Yeah. And Satan probably heard us, hey, look, let's get this live show popping yeah. a couple of days ago. We're going to call it Catching Hell. Then we get here, we catching all types of hell trying to get trying the thing up. It. But the Wadi Hall Bashim Yahweh Shah for the understanding of why, you know? Because we could just be here like, damn, what's going on, man, you know? What's right. going on? But that's, that's why it's, it says you have kept yourself. The scriptures, this is what helps you keep yourself. Remember, right. all the hell we're catching in this profession of ours, all right, because our prof we are professional hell catchers. Yeah. It can all be filtered through here, man. I promise you there's an example for everything that you're going through. I don't right. care what it is. Yeah, well, that's what the scripture said. Blessed is he that readeth. Yeah, come. You have to read. Yeah. I mean, because if you don't read, like the brother said, there's, there's so many examples you know, stories and things that we went through, certain men. I mean, how do you think that we able to remember certain men like Gideon? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, if you don't, if you read about Gideon, Gideon was catching hell, man. He was catching hell, and then the Heavenly Father set him up to be a savior. Yep. And, and and you, these names pop up and, and, and they stay in your mind, you know? Mm -hmm. Why? Because you can, when you read their stories, you're like, oh, shit. You can, uh, 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 you can see yourself going through that. You can yeah. see how it kind of matches some of the things that you're going through. I got another example, bro. Hey, this is a precept you first brought to my attention, bro. This is uh, Amos. I'll let you speak on this. This is Amos 7 and 17. Keep in mind, this is the Lord talking to the prophet Amos. This is Amos 7 and 17. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Thy wife shall be a harlot in the city, and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword. That's right. And thy land shall be divided by line, and thou shalt die in a polluted land, and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of this land. Come on, brother. Read that again. Rock shot. going to go line, because this is a lot. Go ahead. Come on. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh thy wife shall be a harlot in the city. Right. When you deal with that, just, just on that level, you're talking about captivity, right? How... You know, when we came off the boat, Esau pretty much had his way. Really, Esau had his way with our women when we was in the boat, man. While we was laying on top of each other, Esau was already having his way, already setting up his connection that he has to this day with the Israelite woman, man. That connection is treason. And there's nothing we could do about it because we want to change. And now, even when this physical change was taken off, the Esau made sure that the mental and spiritual change was strong. Yeah. That's why he, was, he didn't mind removing the physical change. Because he knew if he told a nigga to leave, a nigga wouldn't want to leave. If he told an Ephraimite, you know, a so-called Mexican, so-called Latino, and Native American to leave, they wouldn't want to leave. Now our women, and now when you fast forward to 2017, our women are completely, the only woman out there at this particular time, the only woman out there showing her ass every day, all day, wherever you go, it's what, it's the Israelite woman. So-called Negro, Hispanic, Native. You don't see, you don't even see Edomite you know, women Walking around like I want to walk around, you know. And the eat of my woman is a slut. She's a slut. Yeah, she's a straight up slut. No, that's uh, one part. Go ahead. I'll come on. It says now this is Amos. Uh, you know, this is still him. It says, "Thy wife shall be a harlot in the city, and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword." Right, that sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword, and that's 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 kept like, but that's that's trials and tribulation, man. That's catching hell. Not only is a nation. But it happens, remember, we catch a hell as a nation, but also as individuals. Right. You know, so when, you know, these things happen. And when they happen, he, but, but Yahweh Shino Shah is putting a hurt on our people. Why? Because Israel deserves it. And, and according to Job, if I can say, uh, uh, get this out right quick, Job uh, 11, it's a Job 11 and 6. The Lord is not even kicking ball. our ass. The Lord is not even kicking our ass to the measure that he's supposed to, that he's right. saying that he's supposed to kick our ass. No, that's a whole nother level, you got that? Yeah, but Job chapter 11, verse 6. Uh -huh. And that he will show thee the secrets of wisdom. Right. That they are double to that which is. Right. Know, therefore, 
that Yahweh Shinar Shai exacted of thee less than thy iniquity deserved. Mm. Mm. Right. See that? So one of the mysteries that, that Jake don't understand, because Jake is crying, we know woe's me, and we catching hell, and this and this and that. Yeah, Esau did do what he had to do. You know, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, he had to do what he had to do. And it was atrocious, atrocious. But one of the mysteries is that the Heavenly Father exacted what? Less. Less than, than what our iniquity deserved, right? Because if you're talking about the iniquity of the nation of Israel going way back when we became a nation in Egypt, all the different captivities. And you know Israelites. And we, we, we <laughs> ultimately, all of Israel is worthy of death. You know Jake. You know Bani, Bani Asher Arla. That's right. If you take mercy aside, if the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shem Shah was not a power of mercy, he would, he, would, he would take us all out and he would have reasons not, to destroy the nation. Not just mercy, everlasting mercy. Everlasting mercy. mercy. That's right. Everlasting, everlasting mercy. Because he only has everlasting mercy for Israel. Right. The, uh, the elect of Israel, really, right. in these times. That precept right? Okay, I wanted to, uh, real quick, uh, Acts, uh, and I'm going to finish Amos. This is Acts 14. 22, it says, confirming the souls of the disciples, remember, in order to be a disciple, all right, you, you have, you said you have to hate your mother, your father, basically, you're close to kin, who ain't right, all right, so, what's that scripture? 14 and 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them, all right, exhorting them to continue in the faith, that's what we're doing, right? And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of the Most High. We go to Rock. We, through much tribulation, must must enter in the kingdom of Yahweh Shai. Like uh, what the brother was talking about with the reference to Second Ezra. It says, uh, "How can we?" Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. Okay. It was a statement that was made. It was. Uh, Because I had something right quick. Yeah, come, come. Right. Uh, the, uh, when you go to Acts uh, 14 and 22, the word, I want to look up the word confirming, right? It says, uh, 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 what's, can you read that out? The yes. It says, uh, confirming the souls of the disciples. Right, confirming, confirming the souls of the disciples. So when you go to the Greek, it says, it's, um, if it's let, me, let me see if I can pull that up. Strong's G, 1991, Mr. Hito. Right, if it's that weak, so, and it means to uh, to establish, besides, strengthen, strengthen more, to render more firm. So, confirm, it says, with, with firmity. Yeah, to strengthen you, something firm and strong. And how does that happen? It's just through being built up yeah. through trials and tribulations that the souls of the elect and the disciples are, co are confirmed, or with firmity. You know, I just thought of... Uh, Bruce Lee, he was doing the one inch punch. Uh, See that when he was using that uh, that electric machine, uh, and every time he got too close, it would shock him. You know, that's that's what comes to mind, man. You know, that's a that's a grueling, a grueling way to strengthen yourself. Kind of how Yahweh right. Shai right. is doing to that's us. Right. That's right. Uh, I'm gonna finish this back in Amos. I'm gonna just finish the last little bit. It says that thou shalt die in a polluted land. Israel shall surely go into captivity for right. of this land. Right, it's, it said, you know, thou shalt die in a polluted land. What's the polluted land? Remember, the scripture said, um, uh, arise, but this is not your rest. What was that? That's right, it says, wait, it says, surely pollute you. So it's talking about America. Right. You know, and Jake, then the scripture said, what? Uh, 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 Psalms 86, 82 or 86, where it said, ye are, ye are gods, mm -hmm. ye shall die God like, like men. Man. Yeah. So Israel has died like men, man. We because remember, what's the gift? What's what's what separates uh, 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 Israel and and the rest of the nation? When you're talking about time, which every you know a lot, the scripture tells you the Most High operates in times and seasons, right? When it comes to time, the separation between the nation of Israel and all the other nations is what Israel gets to have what was supposed to have eternity, eternal life. You know, the eternal life. So what guess what? Not having eternal but we can't have eternal life now. Why? Because we're not following all the statutes of commandments. So now we end up dying like men. 
and where we dying in this polluted land. But that's only a part of it because now we're going into the phase where the Heavenly Father is going to bring us back. You know what I'm saying? As a people, start with the elect back in our land. But the rest of that scripture goes into what? Our land, our actual land mm -hmm. of Israel will be divided by lines. Right. And so when you when you look at the land of, in Israel right now, the land of Israel is divided in lines between the so-called Jew rats, right, and the Palestinians. So there's a line, they have it's magical borders. You know, it's cuts you have, oh, as a matter of fact, you have certain neighborhoods where you have some some jakes that, you know, got up and left America and went out there and uh what's that what's that city where they're staying at? The Mona. And there's a there's a line because that's what you know, you have lines. And then you have certain places where you got the Kushites, the Ethiopians, colossal yep. Jews. That's another line. That's yep. another quarter living in our land. You know, and we, the owners of the land, are in captivity here in America, man. Yeah, they should be pissed off, man. We're not even in our own land. Then you got people fighting over our land. They don't even belong to them. That's why we got to get the hell out of here, man. Um, I got some, um, Manash, you got a precept part? Okay, Manash, can you give me a... Uh, Oh, that Matthews 13 and uh, 22. The brother had brought it out on the comment board. I wanted to get that. This is Matthew 13, verse 22. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. Right. The cares of this world is, 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 a, is a form of catching hell, man. Because we all have to deal with the cares of this world. It's just a matter of how much you let it affect you. You can't let the cares of this world affect you. All right? To a certain point. Of course it's going to affect you. You're going to be vexed. You're going to catch hell. But you cannot dwell on it, man. You cannot dwell on that shit. There's, there's demons. There's demons attached to the, to, attached to the cares of these worlds. Or to the, or the, of this world. Or I, should, I could say these worlds. Yeah, yeah, because you yeah. got many different worlds within this world that we live in, man. This right. planet is unky many that we live in. That's right. right. Go ahead, up. And the deceitfulness of riches choke the word. Right, the deceitfulness of riches. Jake, you might get a good job that requires you to work on Saturdays, paying you a, a good amount of money. And the camp that you uh, that you want to join or the, the camp that, you, uh, uh, that you're listening to, or you know what I mean, it requires you to be out there on Saturday. You got to make a decision. The brother said the thing about the beard. You may have a, get a real, real, real good job, but they require you to shave all your beard off. Mustache and all clean. You know, you got to you gotta chalk that up to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh I'm sure there's a lot of things that the men of the Lord wanted to do back in the ancient times, but the, uh, the people where they were the taskmasters they went to were like, nah, you're one of those. You you follow your house shot, don't you? Yeah. Nah, you you can't wear those fringes in here. Nah, you gotta you gotta take that Mitri off when you're in here, or nah, you gotta cut, you gotta you gotta shape up, man. No, nah, you you have to work on the Sabbath. You know what I mean? Yeah. Back in ancient times. So now in these times, that's another thing. We have we're supposed to be keeping the Shabbat, but you gotta work sometimes. That's catching hell, man. Yeah. What you going What job is gonna let you take off? Four times a month, three, four times a month. They're Random. not gonna let you do that. Random. Yeah, randomly every month. Um, what scripture I call for? Uh, oh, that was good. That was good on that. Uh, uh, Romans eight and eighteen, and uh, can you get First Peter's one and six? You got three up? Okay, come. And these are these are the last two I wanted to get. Um, and if we want, I mean, should we get Micah the seventh chapter is good too, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Micah the seventh chapter gives you your your job description for your profession of catching hell, man. Uh -huh. Because this, like the title says it all, man. Catching hell is our profession. And Micah the seventh chapter, it gives you an outline of of a uh, 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 sequences, a uh, scenarios of of things warning you basically. Right. Of what's to come, because again, right. profession goes back to prophesy. It's always it's all been prophesied. Our right. forefather Micah told us what was going to happen. Right. So don't think no strange things happening, man. Just just deal with it. Just deal with it and pray to Yahweh Bashemah Shai that you can deal with it. Don't ask him to lighten it up. 
or ask him to toughen you up, you know? Uh, this is uh, Hebrews. It's a couple. Oh. And, uh, Hebrews chapter 12. I'm going to start at uh, 5, chapter 12, 5 through 11. This is Hebrews chapter 12 and 5. It says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Yeah, don't try to run from it. You know? Don't try to run from it. Hey, David in his Psalms asked the Lord to try his reins. He wanted the Lord to try him. And believe you me, the Lord will do that if you ask him that in sincerity. Right. It might not come right away. It might come a week later. It might come two months later. And guess what? When it happens, I guarantee you, the Lord is going to put that that spirit your, that of your memory to remember, like, hey, you asked for it. You're oh. like, man, I did ask for this way back when. You know what I mean? Or like, I'm talking about your brothers just now coming in. Because we know, man, when stuff starts happening, we know exactly why, man. Every time. You can't just be wandering out here aimlessly. Stuff happening to you and you don't know why. You did something an hour ago, two hours ago, uh, a month ago. A month ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah the Most High is patient, even in uh, you know judgment. You you know he'll give you time that to, to uh, uh, analyze and try because you're supposed to always look. You know you're you're supposed to examine yourself. So he'll give you time. Stuff. Well, you he'll give you time to examine yourself and see where you kind of went off as so you can go out and you know ask for mercy. You know yeah. pray fast, yeah. ask for mercy. Yeah. But if you don't realize, you don't acknowledge, then the Most High will show you in a way that you're not going to like it. You know, but it, it's for your own benefit. Because if he just, if the Most High just lets you just add, you know, sin upon sin, which that's iniquity, then guess what? Then the Most High's not dealing with you. You know? This is uh, Hebrews 12 and 5. It says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son despise not thou the chastening of the Lord nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Right, and it's going to, it, it may come through a, a man of the Lord. You got to deal with that, man. Right. Yeah, and that's catching hell, but that's for your good. Remember, anytime you're catching hell, no matter how, how it's coming at you, it's strengthening you up. You know what I mean? Come, come. No matter how, it's, it's teaching you a lesson somehow, you know? And they try the tribulation really, man, is just to, to afflict the flesh, man. Yeah. And, and like we read the scripture earlier, it said the morning of men is about their bodies. It's just the flesh. Because the spirit, the spirit knows that everything that's going on right now ain't right. right. The spirit, a lot of time, when your flesh is pushing you to do stuff, your spirit is telling you, nah, we shouldn't be doing it. The way to stop that, and I encourage brothers, just you, don't fast just on the day of atonement. Yeah. What, you, what we did was back on a Tuesday, what we did on Tuesday evening to Wednesday evening, that should be done at least once a month. Amen. Amen. At least once a month, just to start out. Then maybe once every other week. And then you just you push yourself. Because that's going to purge out. It's going to purge out everything, bro. I'm telling you. That's what the Lord told us, man. Fast, pray, watch. Watch, fast, and pray. Right, that's right, because the spirit is the because the spirit ain't really worried about none of this garbage, man. Right. If you just say it, all the spirit wants to do is do what all the other spirits in the spirit world are doing, which is praising how about Shimon Shah day in and day out. Mm -hmm. Your spirit doesn't want to be around fucking faggots. Your spirit doesn't want to work during the during the Sabbath. Your spirit doesn't want to do anything that's contrary to the scriptures. Well, your flesh is a total opposite. So when your flesh, when you more in tune with your flesh, when your flesh ain't having fun, then your flesh is going to try and beat on your spirit. And that's how you feel fucked up. Yeah, right? it's a constant fight. I wish I would, I do not. Right. So this is Hebrews 12 and 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, Yahweh by Shem El Shai yeah, dealeth with you. When you're scourged, and you know anything about scourging, you don't always get scourged in the same place. Yeah. It, you may get hit in a different place, in a different way, a different angle, different velocity, you know? The pain is different each time, you know? Right. Verse 7, if ye endure chastening, Yahweh by Shem El Shai dealeth with you. Yeah. Right, Russia, you mind looking up on the word deal? 
and uh, etymology. Because you know, and seven. right? Um, uh, Hebrews twelve and seven. If you can look, if you look it up on. Um, Look up in the precept. Yeah, in the precept. Uh, blue, blue, letter, yeah, blue letter. Blue letter. Blue letter. Yeah, yeah. Let's try blue letter first. Because, you know, we, I mean, we all, we, you know, we, we know, we always use the word deal. You know, mm -hmm. I, you know, I deal, I deal with her and I, you know, the dealings. Yeah. But, you know, you want to get more edification. Because, hey, listen. Well, of course, listen, by now, you already know. Great Millstone started when our elders and apostles, we look, we look into words. You know, because words, a lot of times, one word just to get the understanding behind one word, you gotta you gotta try to cut the word. You know, um, Timothy two and uh, Second Timothy two and fifteen. Mm -hmm. You know, study, show thyself approved. You know, said uh, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, and, and like I always like to say, uh, rightly dissecting because when you look at the word dividing, it says to dissect. You gotta dissect the word. You can't just take the word for face value. You got that? Oh, that word uh, deal dealers. Um, to bear towards, mm. i.e., to lead to, mm. tender, especially to Yahweh, treat, bring to unto, deal with, do offer unto up. When you offer, you offer unto or offer up. Right. Present unto, put to. Present. You said present unto and put to. You got some more yep. on the strong? I got. That, uh, that was the strongest definition. Okay. In the Jacinius, number two, all the way towards the bottom. It says the uh, signifies to be born towards one to attack, mm -hmm. then figuratively, figuratively to behave oneself towards one. So, uh, so yeah, because because if you saying you can say yo, you know, I'm going to deal with the brother, you know, the, you know spiritually yeah. So we're going to deal with the spirit, you know. Okay, we're going to deal. Oh, you can say yo, I'm going to deal with that nigga. Yeah, yeah. It's all, that's about the tone, yeah. it's all about the tone and the content. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You have some more on that, brother, or that was it? That was, yeah, that was strong. Yeah. Okay. Because Hebrews 12 and 7, it says, If ye endure chastening, Yahweh Shemel Shah dealeth with you as with sons. For, for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Yeah, we all got beat growing up. What you think? The most are not going to beat us? Right. You know? That's and right. When we were growing up, our parents did it. So that we want to grow up and get locked up and yeah. be crazy yeah. ass niggas, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's why you see the Lord out there getting the, the top blown off. The, by, yeah, the Lord. By, by our boat, man. The Lord is is chastising us and grooming us so we can be prepared for the times to come, man. Mm -hmm. That's right. He's grooming his men of the Lord right now, and it's coming by catching hell. Right. Right. Oh, this is verse eight. It says, "But if ye be without chastening." Whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. What's that, uh, Ain't that what you just said? Uh? Yeah, yeah, kind of. What's that word for bastard again? Uh, uh, a mamzer. Mumzar. Yeah, mumzar. Right. You know? You're a mumzar, basically. Okay. Hebrews 12 and 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reference. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Ooh. Yeah, our, our, our fleshly fathers, we reference them. Right. How much more so the heavenly Father? Remember the saying, we, we always say, oh, yo, no, Pops used to beat my ass. Mm -hmm. That's how I turned out the way I turned out. Mm -hmm. That's a reference. So, you know, but you're not going to reference the Father of Spirit, Yahweh Bashim al when he's giving, he's handing to you an ass whooping, a spiritual ass whooping, man. Uh, I got two more. Mm -hmm. It says, For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Right, because sometimes your parents will whoop your ass for their own pleasure. Let's say mm -hmm. you did something, you know, whatever, whatever reason. Well, when it's your own pleasure, meaning, of course it would be helpful for you, but if you did something that was offensive to your to your to your, your parent, he's gonna whoop your ass, and yeah. that's also gonna make him feel good, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, verse eleven it says, "Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, <laughs> no hell catching for the present." <laughs> it shouldn't seem joyous, you know. We take, I mean, the scripture does say. 
take it cheerfully, but that's joyous, like, and awesome. Happy. Yeah, like, some happy, like, you just love, like, love catching hell, like, that's, really. we shouldn't, you know, it was a balance, you know, it was a balance to this thing, you know? Yeah, because cause this the happiness that we have, remember, it's the same thing, well, what's that scripture say, even in laughter, there's sorrow, you know, in Ecclesiastes. Right. You know, that's the type of happiness, when we don't have full happiness, you know, right. we, we're not going to have full happiness and enjoyment. And really joy until you have a shot come back. Right, because we're not happy that we're not we're catching hell from Esau, but we're not happy that this motherfucker is over us. Mm-hmm. We're happy that we understand why and that he's going down. Right. That's why we're happy, you know? Right. And the Lord the Lord is using Esau to correct us in measure, you know? Right, absolutely. He's correcting us in measure, showing us wickedness, you know. That's we right. know what know what's right and what's wrong and appreciate the righteousness of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah that much more. That's right. It says, <clears throat> now verse 11, Hebrews 12 and 11, now no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wow. And I want to get this as verse 15. It says, looking diligently Lest any man fail of the grace of Yahweh Hashem Yahshua, lest, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Yeah, yeah, don't be yeah, 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 through the grace. You know, you you sitting, the Most High is giving you a grace period, and you are getting jacked up, but you bitter as hell. <laughs> yeah, you just bitter as hell because it's taking I can't a while. Take it no more, yeah, man. It's taking a while. That's why I said you Akimu are just coming in. Get ready for the ride, man. We don't know what Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah has in store, so you gotta prepare your mind for anything, man. You got that Romans out? Romans 8 and uh, 18? Anasha? Off the shot, can you read Romans 8 and 18? And then I'll give any more precepts you can bring them out and then. Alright, so, uh, we'll finish on this. You got something not? I was looking for the scripture when it says, when you fast, you're not, you're not supposed to turn up your face and make. Uh, oh, Matthew the 6th chapter. That's what I was just saying. Uh, yeah, Matthew the 6th chapter. Yeah. Yeah, after the prayer. It's uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So I can read that one more time, Mark. For I reckon. Now, the sufferings of this present time. Right, the sufferings of this present time, no matter what you're going through. It says sufferings. That encompasses everything. I don't I don't care what you're going through. All right? No matter what the sufferings are of this present time, right now. These scriptures are lively, man. When it says present time, it's talking about so-called September 1st, 2017, man. Right. At whatever the hell time it is right now. Man. Right. Go ahead, up. Uh. Are not worthy. Are not worthy. The sufferings of this present time are not worthy. To be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For what's coming to us, man. We got we, we got a kingdom prepared for us, bro. Yeah. A kingdom. The whole earth is going to be subject unto us again, just like in the garden, man. So what, you, what little bullshit we're going through right now. And that's right. It's little bullshit. Yeah. Whatever little bullshit, because everything we're going through is nothing compared to being drugged through the whole street of the whole nation seeing us yeah. getting spit on, yeah. stabbed, beat, carrying a big ass heavy plank. Nothing is compared to what Yahweh Shah had to go through. And then you take that coped with what we're getting. That's a lot. You cannot compare what we're going through right now to what Yahweh Shah went through. Physically for the whole nation or for what we have in store, man. We're talking about land, animals, whatever animal brothers like. You may have a favorite dog that you like. You can have a pack of 4,000 of them. You, know, you may have a particular uh, a woman that you like. You like the way that she looks or something like that. You might have uh, uh, 200 of those women. Right. You know, a lot of women in this life, they turn us down. Because of our spirit or because of this truth or whatever reason, you don't get bent out of shape out of that. You say, look, we'll see you on the other side. That's right. That's right. 
you may eat some food, the food make you sick or make you feel bad or something, and you, you get, get affliction, like the yeah. first precept the brother brought out, infirmity, yeah. Yeah. that is not compared to the basketball size oranges that's yeah. going to be in the kingdom. Yeah. The cluster of grapes is going to take 15 Edomites to carry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not to be compared, man. It's not to be compared at all. It's not even worth The scripture says it's not worthy. Paul was writing to the Israelites in Rome because they was catching hell over there, bro. You know? Precept, book of Sirach, chapter 4, verse 21. For there is a shame that bringeth sin. And there is a shame which is glory and grace. So, you know, the shame of going through, you know, the elect, you know, sufferings, you know, but, you know, doing science work, success and retreat, it has a, you know, a positive reward. You know, because the scripture talks about, you know, our labor is not in vain. So that means, you know, what about the Messiah set up for the elect? You know, you're going to get uh, that sure reward. You know, the sure reward of this world is not uh, something you could uh, bank on. You know, it's not stable. You know, you see the storm in uh, Houston. Yeah. Yeah. People's yeah. wealth is you know, flooded. Yeah. You know, the insurance companies are scratching their head how they're going to pay all these folks. You know, they don't have the insurance. Yeah, which most didn't. Well, it, well, it talks about, well, but it, like you said, where moms and rust are corrupt. Yeah. That's this place. It's yeah. not, this is not our rest. Uh, the insurance companies, lo and behold, they didn't got people again, especially Jake. Yeah. Because down there in Houston, people had insurance, but guess what? They didn't have flood yeah. insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Most, so, yeah. Most of them, so, so 90%. Now, so, so now, you didn't pay because you didn't have it in your mind that you were going to get flooded. Yeah. So yeah. now... Now you have it in your mind, well, damn, I didn't gave all this money to the insurance companies, and they're not even going to help us. Now uh, the big talk on the radio stations is what? People got to learn to move. That's why I was trying to talk to brothers earlier. Michael Bazin, that's the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, Michael Bazin. Michael Bazin show, that's the Spirit of the Lord. His show uh, earlier today, he had Johnny Gill on there, you know, he was talking, but before he was talking, he was like, uh, well, the big thing that you got to get in your mind is, is to move. When you move, sometimes when you move, you change careers and woo this and woo that. Sometimes it's a fresh start. Then he had the nerve to quote the Bible. He said, um, a man is not honored in his own his country. country. He had the nerve to quote that, you know, for that situation. Yo, he, but, he chose the wrong he, one. He said that. A he man, chose the wrong he said, precept to quote. He said, don't quote me on this. And they laughing about it. And he's like, a man is not honored in his own town and stuff, so it's best for you to move. That, that's, was, boy, that was bullshit that he said that, but that's that's the thing, you know? Now, who who would have thought a year ago that the point in time, around this time, you'd be in this predicament? You see that? Well, you trick yourself out. Matthew 6 and 16, moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to yeah. fast. Uh, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So, like that, that fasting is uh, like a chastisement. It's, it's likened unto a chastisement that we're going through. Man. When we're going through our, when we're going through a fast, what is a fast? It's an affliction of our souls, the sacrifice unto the Lord. And guess what? When you're going through the chastisement. Don't disfigure your face. Just take it, man. Thank you. You should know by now, every time you fast, you're going to have the worst day of your life. The most yeah. high, and if he knows that you're fasting and you're sincere, he's going to make sure all the spirits fuck with you. Yeah. On your job, your family. Yeah. You might want to offer you food all the time. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know the smells in the hats. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Food and chicken, yeah. chicken. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, uh, <laughs> you know the smells in the hats. Yeah. Uh, some Ciroc 2 and 4. Whatsoever is brought up. I started one out. Sirach 2 yeah, and 1. Yeah, yeah. I was going to have you just read the whole thing. Just read, read yeah, 1 on down for a little bit. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure, and make not haste in the time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Uh, and the thing is, I mean, starting with the elders and the apostles, you know, you hear apostle Bavar constantly talking about Sirach the second chapter. Listen, if you've been in this shoot long enough, you know Sirach the second chapter. You've had to run towards Sirach the second chapter 
just to, to make sure that what to get that all uh, that that confidence, man. Mm-hmm. You you know you go through shit and sickness is keep you know keep coming at you. Why? Because he wants your confidence. Which confidence means what? With faith, he wants your confidence to leave, so you can just fall out. So you've had you've had to run in several times, and you don't ever get tired of hear that, man. Brothers will tell you that's if I'm not mistaken. A lot of brothers will tell you that's a chapter one of chapters where. Most of the actors be able to recite from the top of their head from the beginning to the well, end. Well, there's been days where you, you just there's been days where I just read Sirac two or three times in a row. Yeah. The, the, the second, second chapter. chapter. The yes. Second chapter. You just you can read recite Daniel the three whole times. chapter. Yeah. How many chapters can brothers can say, "Yo, I can recite Daniel the whole chapter." Yeah. Sirac the second chapter is one of those, man. Yeah, yeah. Those are life spiritual lifesavers, man. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Verse four: Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerful. Right. Whatsoever it doesn't matter what the hell it is. And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Don't don't disfigure your face, man. Right. Like in the fasting. Just take it, man. All right? Um, for gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Uh, what did we get first Peter one in uh what was it? Bill? One in six? First Peter, yeah, yeah, yeah. First Peter. Is that one in sixteen? Or one in six? Yeah, yeah, one in six. First Peter is one in six. Uh, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be. Right, you see the brother emphasize for a season. That's why I said it's not to be compared. Anything that's going on right now is not to be compared to what's in store for us. Go ahead. If need be, ye are in heaviness through many full temptations. Catching hell. Go ahead. That the trial of your faith being much more uh, precious. Our, our faith is on trial, Aki. <laughs> our faith is on trial. That's right. The Lord knows we're faithful, but he's trying the hell out of us. That's right. Each one of us has a different trial. You know, my hell is different from this brother's hell. That's right. And this brother's hell. But we all collectively are catching hell. That's why it says we're supposed to bear one another's burdens. That's right. You know what I mean? Go ahead, Aki. Being much more, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shah. And that's the whole point. We want to be able to endure this hell that we're catching in this profession that we profess. The scripture says, Thou hast professed a good profession. We want to hold on to this and, and, and sustain this thing so that we can be found in the praise and the glory when your Howard Shah shows up. That's right. You know? Right. We want to be exalted, man. We're low. We are we're low right now, man. That's right. That was it, uh? Oh, at the appearance of Yahweh Shah and Mashiach. Huh, at the appearance of Yahweh Shah. Huh. This is Job chapter 6, uh, verse 7. It says, the things, I'm going to start at 7. It says, the things that my soul refused to touch are as my sorrowful meat. Oh, that I might have my request, and that Yehovah Shemel Shah would grant me the thing that I long for. Verse 9, even that it would please Yehovah Shemel Shah to destroy me, that he will let loose his hand and cut me off. Mm. Then should I yet have comfort. Yea, I will harden myself in sorrow. Mm. Let him not spare, for I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. Ooh, that hits home, bro. It's been times, bro. You, when you so you get to that point where you're depressed and sad, I'm talking when you first come to the yeah. truth. Yeah. And it just hardens the fuck out of you, bro. Right. It just it gets you so tough that you just cold to everybody. Right. I mean, you, you, and that's how you gotta be. You gotta sustain that level. That you gotta be moderate with that that right. that coldness and that harshness. Right. Because uh, if you let it off too much, you're gonna start getting reproached. That's yeah, not using angry, discretion. Be angry just sitting up. Yeah, just walking around grumpy all the damn time. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Of course, we're grumpy and we're upset all the time, but. I'm talking about you, fr- a 24-hour frown. You yeah, know, yeah. you at work, yeah. mean mugging people and yeah, shit. You yeah. snatching the money out of the person's hand at Whole Foods and shit. Yeah. <laughs> you getting your groceries. Yeah, that means... Give that- me my slave masters, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just, it's just Jake just wilding, bro. Yeah. 
That you means know? you've been overtaken, man. That's, that's too much. You know, you got to use discretion. Yeah, we're going to catch hell, but, you know, we, we we release our aggression. We take it out with the words of Yahweh Bashim Shai out on the highways and byways, man. You're okay. not going to catch us in releasing our anger for this hell carnally in the world. You know what I mean? Then you gonna catch more hell for doing that. Uh, shit. And, and like you said, I, the, the anger, the frustration. One of the things that lead Akims to, to read more, study more, read more books, gain more knowledge. You know, wisdom, knowledge, and, and different things from you know, spirit of power. You hold by shit now, shot. But like I said, it's that anger. Yeah. It's like you, 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 you seeing how you getting your ass handed to you. You know, Bob, the Israelite, the nigger woman, the Israelite woman, the Hispanic woman in this world. All of us had to deal with that mother's uncle, whatever, the child support, all of that. And instead of just going out, whooping her ass or killing her, no, instead as a man of the Lord, it pushes you to study. It pushes you to do your research on uh, 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 things like child support, you know, things you can bring out, like the signs that we got on abortion, right? Yeah. When an Israelite woman comes in, she's bugging out. We got the board. We got the research. It's right yeah. there. We got the facts. You know what I'm saying? And that that's the truth. Yeah. You know? The answers. You got the answers. So you got to use that negative energy, and then that and that negative energy, you know, turn that and turn that negative energy into what positive energy through what the teaching of the word, yeah, through yeah. bringing forth the truth. Channel that when you're catching hell and you're feeling down, channel that into the spirit of Yahweh Shimon Shah. Read more, right? You know read. Read. read more, study more, right. gain more knowledge, yes. and that's gonna make you feel good. Why? Because you're feeding your spirit. All your spirit wants. Your spirit is not worried about water. Your spirit is not worried about these things. Your spirit is just all the only thing your spirit wants is knowledge. Yeah. That's the only your spirit wants to know. And you have a shot when you read Ephesians, uh, uh, this, Ephesians speaks about uh, the love of Yahweh Shah, which passive knowledge. So why it says the Yahweh Shah is what it's all about what? Being spiritual. So your spirit is only worried about knowledge. So if you catch a hell and you feel spiritually down. Of course, you got to pray and fast and you by Shemel Shah. And then you got to read. You got to feed your spirit, man. Yeah. Feed your spirit with knowledge. That yeah. would, that's what makes your spirit feel good. Mm -hmm. Was there anything else? Was there anything else, Dr. Yeah. Yeah. All right, with that, all right. I'm going to give all praise to Yahweh by yeah. Shemel yeah. Shah. Yeah. All right, we're going to give all praise to our Heavenly Father, the Creator, Yahweh. Name is Sonny Yahweh Shah. All right, I'm going to say Shalom, my Barakim, La Bukaram, Shah, Shah Allah. Peace and blessings to elect the Israel, the Akim, Akwathim, Wabunim, Shah, Yah, Shah Allah. All right, it's the men, women, and children, the one third elect predestinated to make it out of here. It's catching all out hell right now. Uh -huh. Guess what? We all dealing with it. We are all, uh, one last scripture, bro. First Peter 5 and, uh, First Peter 5 and 9, I think it is, 5 and 8. We're all going through it. Seven verse eight. Yeah. Right. First Peter chapter five verse eight. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Right. Keep going. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. Right. Whom. Resist steadfast in the faith. Go ahead. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Right. We're all going through it. It's all been accomplished in all of us. That's what I'm saying. We've all gone through this before. We're just going through it again in this life. So whatever you're going through, there's another brother out there going through it. You pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to just strengthen you, man. To be more sober. To be more vigilant. Finish that up. For the power of all grace, who have called us into his eternal glory by Yahusha Mashiach, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect. Hey, that's the spirit. Mm. Hey, the water you have by Shema for these Yahushua. words, man. These words should comfort you while you're catching hell in this profession of, profession of ours, man. Suffering to perfection, man. Hey, that's another sit down. Yeah, yeah brother, that's powerful. That's another man. one, bro. Suffering to perfection. That's another one. Yeah, again, the water, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, man, for real. Uh, Shalom to the elect. 
Double honest to our elders and apostles, known as Great Millstone in this time. All right, Shani Kabah, God, Wallow of Quads, Apony Mnawasha, Yasha Allah, but I. All right, and Shalom until the next time. Shalom. Keep Allah. catching hell. It's free, Yahweh, Shemiah, Shah. It's part of our profession. Right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.